Welcome to the town of Tivat, T-I-V-A-T. And in the town of Tivat, it's port called Porto Montenegro in the country of Montenegro. I'm Rudy Maxa, travel journalist and broadcaster. And I'm over here in a country that, let me introduce myself, hello. I'm here in a country that I think Americans largely underappreciate, which is to say Montenegro. I'll tell you a little about it while I walk, but I thought you might like to see how the other one one hundredth of one percent live yacht wise because there's some amazing crafts here let's take a little walk down the uh, in the harbor here down this is uh i sort of liken this some of these uh, yachts to condos laid horizontally into the water this is a lot of these are registered in various british territories um there's another one over here there's another one here they're just breathtaking you'll see them as we walk along this one's registered in georgetown it's called the quattro l Wish I could tell you along there, but I'm a bad judge of distance, not having a yacht myself. Um, oh my gosh. Look at this puppy over here. These are big boys. These are big, big yachts. Um, so Puerto Montenegro is sort of a small community uh, developed by a Canadian billionaire who bought this land and put in these very nice docks for these very nice yachts. There's one that stretches quite a bit. Look at these things. Unbelievable. Um, and also put in a hotel, the Regent. I'll introduce you that to the moment. And a lot of nice shops, you'll see. Here's another big fella. I mean, there's just nothing short of uh, jaw dropping if you're not used to hanging around uh, wealthy people's yachts, as I am not used to. Um, this is called the, looks like the Air. A fancy typeface, but I think that's what they're trying to tell us here. I don't know what Valletta means, that's not Puerto Vallarta. And it's interesting, I've found most of these yachts have their own uh, welcome mats with their logo on them. Perhaps you get them free when you buy a yacht. Um, let's, so let's call these the Maserati, well, the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis of the yacht world. And then these sort of guys that cost, you know, I don't know, a million or whatever. We'll call them the BMWs and the Mercedes of the yacht world. There are a lot of both of those types. Let me walk a little faster because I don't want to bore you with yachts. But they are quite, quite incredible to look at. So I'm going to uh, try to speed up my walk here. Pardon me if I'm a little jiggly, but uh, better I walk promptly than, as I say, bore you with yachts. Um, let me tell you a little about Montenegro. Montenegro is about the size of Rhode Island, so it's a small country that hugs the Adriatic just below Croatia. Both Croatia and, Adri and uh, Montenegro, as I say, hug the Adriatic. Uh, and so, are, so you've got a beautiful body of water, about twice as... Uh, as uh, saline as the Mediterranean, I'm told. And then you've got uh, this incredible backdrop of these mountains, which here are pretty much forest covered. But if you look over here, you'll see it's basically limestone, enormous mountains of limestone, which is why most of the buildings who are less than 100 years old, and a 100 year old building here is considered having been built yesterday, uh, are, are built of this stone. You will find in the older cities, uh, no structures built of wood or brick. They're built of the limestone from the nearby mountains. Uh, there is a walled city nearby here called Kotor, K-O-T-O-R, which is probably the most uh, visited of the attractions in Montenegro. It's about a 20 minute drive from where I am right now through a long tunnel. And uh, it is a walled city much like Dubrovnik in Croatia, smaller, but no less impressive. I uh, actually did a walking tour of that if you are watching on YouTube. Just type in Rudy Maxa and Kotor, K-O-T-O-R, and you'll see the walled city of Kotor here. Uh, the problem with Kotor is it doesn't have many hotel rooms. They've got like seven small hotels. And I wanted to see Kotor, but uh, yeah, nice, nice. Look at, look at these guys. I'm telling you, they're floating condominiums. There's the Chitana there. This is the Q95. There was one huge one in here a couple days ago called Skyfall, which, as I recall, is the name of a James Bond movie. Um, and it was certainly fitting. It certainly had a James Bondian look about it. Either that or the, it was the bad guy in a James Bond movie. Excuse me, I have to duck under this uh, post here to get out. They uh, have this 
gate here to keep those of us who don't have yachts here from driving in. So here we go. This is a lovely one. This is called the Tango and it's registered in the Cook Islands. Check that out. I'm trying to get the sun behind me. It's 10:15 uh, in the morning here today while I'm doing this. You should know that on July 5th, 2021. So we're sort of at the COVID travel is just starting to, COVID starting to allow people to travel. Not that COVID's not allowing you to travel. The uh, vaccine is allowing folks to travel a little more freely. All you need to come to Montenegro is a vaccination card and your pass US passport, if you're an American. Uh, so it's an easy country to visit. So is Croatia, um, neither require COVID tests before you come in, but beware if you're going somewhere else, they might. For example, I'm going tomorrow to Paris and I have a vaccination card and passport isn't enough. I have to have a COVID test. My hotel is providing one um, or providing the service for 70 euros, which is about, well, about $90 or more. Um, so it's not cheap, but it's the only way I'm gonna be able to get into Paris. Uh, coming to the end of this, uh, I don't know, I'm not a nautical guy. I don't know what, am I walking on a, on a way? I don't know. I'm walking on a long, I guess, I guess dock. I mean, these ships are docked. We're approaching the Renegade here. You know, you can find the history and last sales price of many of these yachts by researching online, by typing in the name of the yacht, like Renegade, or like the Renegade, excuse me. The largest yacht docked here is not within view of here, and it is the largest, the largest yacht powered by wind in the world. Actually, the largest vessel of any powered by wind in the world since maybe Christopher Columbus and his fellow explorers. It's called the Black Pearl, and it is stunning. It looks like a black bullet in the water. It is much larger than any of these yachts. It's parked about a half a mile from here. It uh, is or was owned by a Russian billionaire who died, um, I think, the third week of June 2021, just about three weeks ago. Uh, he lived in Monte Carlo, and he reportedly died of COVID, though his family issued a statement announcing his death, and they're very tight-lipped about how he died. Um, but that is, if you type in Black Pearl and Yacht, you will see this amazing yacht. It has three massive, massive masts. And uh, the, the sails for those masts can be unfurled in seven seconds. And it's enormous. They're black masts, masts uh, black sails, by the way. Um, they're computer controlled. They respond to the wind. So there's nobody running around, pulling here and there and ducking, uh, moving masts. It, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, the billionaire and his wife are reportedly in a messy divorce. I don't know who's going to wind up with it. But anyway, that is uh, about it. Okay, so over here we have our, if those were our Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Mercedes and BMWs here. Here are our Honda Accords, you know, and Toyota, Camrys and so on. None of which I can afford either. But, uh, you know, this is a big harbor with a lot of uh, sort of, regular size yachts here. We are now entering the part of Porto, Porto Montenegro that's restaurants and, uh, and shops. This will give you an idea of what kind of clientele they expect here. There is a sculptor who has uh, his sculptures scattered about Porto Montenegro today. I mean, excuse me, during the summer. Here is one of them. I will show you his name and you'll see a couple others on our walk here. This is made of very very hard plastic. His name is Aydin Zaleski. I don't know if he's uh, if he's Montenegrin or not. So there are any number of um, cafes and restaurants along the waterfront here. But there are a whole lot of uh, white tablecloth dining restaurants as well. Dobradan. Uh, now we're entering the Dobradan means hello in uh, well, in Croatian, and folks here speak Russian because there are a lot of Russian visitors. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, they speak Croatian, they speak Armenian, uh, they speak all kinds of languages. For your information, as an American tourist, if you're an American watching this, English is widely spoken. They're happy to see Americans, and the Montenegrin people couldn't be more friendly uh, to tourists than they are. So we're coming to the main shopping street here in Puerto Montenegro. And again, this is a small community along the water in the town of Privat, P-R-I-V-A-T. 
it's a place you might want to stay if you're coming to see Kotor. Um, Kotor is probably about, I drove it from Dubrovnik out of Croatia. You can cross the border, as I say, with just a vaccination record and a passport. I think it took me about two, two and a half hours. I did stop for lunch, so I'm not sure. But uh, so here we go on the main shopping street, which is pretty empty, even at 10, 10, 20, this, 10, 25 this morning on a, what's today? Today is a Tuesday. Um, but this is quite lively at night and uh, well peopled by what I would call look like very well-tended men and women, if you know what I mean. Dressed very nicely, quite chic, a lot of children. So here's your Dior. Um, and by the way, if you shop at the, at the Dior store, if you're a little weary from walking around and shopping, they have this uh, sort of garden, uh, garden lounge for you and they will serve you. I know I've seen people serve water, whether they'll bring you out champagne or not, I don't know, because I'm not gonna be buying any Dior. Uh, coming onto a restaurant here that is, this is a steakhouse actually. It's really an American style menu steakhouse. Um, quite full at night. I have not eaten here. I'm not a big meat guy, but uh, I eat over here at Roberto's, which specializes in seafood, as do most restaurants in Montenegro. Seafood is, as you can imagine, a big deal here, being right on the Adriatic. Most of the fish, particularly the sea bass, are caught here. Oh, look, here's another one of our sculptures. This one is called La Siffleur. I don't speak French, so I can't tell you what that means, but I'm sure many of you do because so many Americans do speak French. Uh, this is a little sort of indentation here, and it's called uh, Venice Square, private for guests only, of course. And you've got some of the Honda Accords and the Camrys of the yachts here. I don't mean to belittle them, I'm sort of being sarcastic. You got your Valentino shop here, you got your Balmain shop here, you got your Alexander McQueen shop here. All the good names are here, so if you come off your yacht and you simply have nothing to wear for dinner, they are here to help. Balenciaga, Gucci, I don't know what off-white is, I've never heard of that one, but I'm sure if, uh, I'm sure if, um, I had a yacht, I'd know that. This is uh, the side of the Regent Hotel where I am staying, and it is the hotel here that anchors uh, the Porto Montenegro. I would say room rates now in season are about $300 a night for a standard double. I think I'm paying a little less than that, but not much by the time you add taxes and fees. It's a four-star, five-star hotel. It's very nice. Um, the surface is incredible. I'll take you inside it in a moment. Um, but it sort of anchors this shopping street here. Here's that darn French swimsuit maker that I can't never pronounce again because I don't uh, Vela Brakeman, I think. Let me find out. I've never known how to pronounce this properly. Let me ask someone who's here. Dobre dan. How do you pronounce in French the name of your store? Vela Brakeman? Vela Brakeman. Vela Brakeman. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure with the French. Okay. <laughs> but you work here. <laughs> yes, but I do not study So how French. do you pronounce it? I pronounce it Wilbur Queen. I think that's correct, actually. I have wondered for years about that. I just wanted to ask. Thank you. And bathing suits for men are about $200, $300? Yes. Yes, I have one. But I don't have a yacht. <laughs> but I do have a bathing suit. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we've cleared that up, huh? Okay. Ooh, I love purple stuff. Very, very nice. That's for women, but it's still purple. I like that. Here are some of their bathing suits if you've never seen a Vela Break Queen suit or a Vela Brickman suit. Okay, back, uh, to, back to our little walk here, coming up to the Regent. Um, Rolex will let you know the time here, anytime you need to know. Oh, wait a minute, let's take a look in the window and see what some of these condos are going for. This is the, the uh, shaded walk into the hotel. Very nice. Um, let's see what... Uh, Let's just check out a couple one bedrooms in the window of the real estate office, shall we? Um, as you look down the street here, the flags here indicate the entrance to the Regent, but those buildings to the left are buildings number two and three of the hotel. On the right, let me swing around a little, it's a very expensive condominium. Um, we'll talk about the Russians in a minute. <laughs> but let's see what a condominium would cost in these buildings. Looks like about, about a half a million euros for a one bedroom residence. Uh, no, it's access to exclusive owners club and dedicated lifestyle team. 
I need a lifestyle team. Here's another one, 455,000 for one bedroom. Access to the multi-tiered pool podium, which I'll show you in a minute, it's part of the hotel. A lifestyle team, how do you get a lifestyle team? Again, the dramatic mountains in the background, and by the way, I went up them, drove up one of these mountains a, a couple days ago because there's a national park that's supposed to be beautiful there. It is a road built by the Austria-Hungarian army. It's very narrow. I would call it the death road. There are 25 switchbacks. I made it 17 before I chicked out, chickened out and came back down. So narrow that when an oncoming car comes, it's, it's every man for himself to try to squeeze by and not fall off a cliff. It's a pretty scary road. It was very exciting. I made it back alive and the rental car was not scratched by rocks along the side or other cars, much to my surprise. Let's step into the region and see what we got. Um, oh, the Russians, yes. A lot of visitors to Montenegro are Russian. It's a very, very popular vacation place for Russians. They, uh, and I have a feeling a lot of Russian rubles are, or dollars are parked uh, in these condominiums and especially these yachts here. Uh, as I said, the largest, the huge, huge black pearl is owned by a Russian. Let's just step inside and see what we find. This is the lobby. Oh, and here is the, uh, here's the guy who's been most helpful while I'm here. Good morning. How are you? All good, you? Tell me your name. Marco. And Marco, I'm... how long have you worked here? Uh, for two months, but I work also before here, yeah. And how many rooms are in the hotel? Uh, 170. Okay, and what, what nationality outside of the country is most, are your most common guests? Yes, guests we here? have a lot of people from Serbia, Russia, United States, France, Germany, Great Britain. What would be number one? Mm, I think Russian people. Think Russians, yeah. right. And a lot of these yachts, I think, are probably owned by Russians. Would you, yes, you yes. presume that? Right. Yeah. Well, thank you <laughs> I would for, say so. <laughs> thank you for your service during my stay here. You are welcome, I sir. I love this hotel. <laughs> you are welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Marco's uh, one of the staff here, and the staff has been great here. There's a uh, very pretty bar here uh, outside, sort of halfway outside. And a lot of water features here in this hotel. And then, of course, there are more yachts there, so you can take your cocktail and see what kind of yacht you'd like. Let me take you and show you the pool. I'm going to ask you to be patient with me because I have to go up an elevator for about, oh, I don't know, 12 seconds, so you're not going to see anything interesting other than the side of an elevator. Um, bear with me on this. By the way, uh, if you are coming here and going on to another European country, be sure to check what the entry requirements are. As I mentioned, I'm going to Paris tomorrow and Paris requires a COVID test within 72 hours of your flight. Fortunately, the Regent is, uh, has a service that comes here and gives you a COVID test and gives you a result in about four hours. I will be doing that in about 20 minutes. Thank you. So I'm gonna take you up to the uh, first floor. We were on the ground floor. They call that zero here, of course and show you the pool area because it's quite, uh, quite nice. So we'll walk through past the spa desk. That's the spa desk, they have a haman, they have an indoor, by the way, they have an indoor pool, a huge jacuzzi, not technically a jacuzzi, but like a jacuzzi, a uh, hammam, a steam bath, and a sauna. Those are all free for use of guests. Um, of course, massages and so on in the spa are extra. We're now passing into the second building of the hotel. I was in the first with the lobby. I'm staying in the third, which is here on the other side of the pool. Take a look at that right now. So I'm glad Marco confirmed that the Russians are the predominant audience here. But again, English is widely spoken. They're happy to see us. Uh, Montenegro was part of Yugoslavia before it was broken up. Um, I think it became independent in 09 from Serbia, I believe. And I believe it was 2017 that they joined NATO. So Montenegro is now part of NATO. They are applying to be a member of the EU. Here is the pool bar. Nobody's really here yet. Where you get your towels, where you help the staff. Don't want it done. And uh, there's a lot of water elements here. I'll try to keep the sun to my back as I shoot so you can see things. Um, there are a couple pools outside here. This is one of them. I'll get you a longer view here in a moment. We'll separate out some people. So this is a pool area. So this is one pool right here. 
that's the condominium across the pedestrian street with the shops. Third building where I'm staying at the Regent, and uh, this is another pool. This seems to be the adult pool down here. Uh, children seem to be in the one I just showed you behind me. But uh, pool service, by the way, is great. You order a drink or a sandwich or a salad, and they come instantly, unlike many resorts I've been in the world. Um, and again, you got more. There's a huge ship way out there. I don't, yeah, perhaps you can see it. Yeah, you may be able to. Quite impressive. Um, let's go into uh, over here. So again, more water elements. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, welcome to Porto Montenegro in the town of Tivat, T-I-V-A-T. In the country of Montenegro, which I am recommending, you put on your bucket list. Um, if you'd like to receive my every other week newsletter where I talk about places like this and travel and how to maximize frequent flyer miles and changes in the hotel and airline industry, all that kind of stuff, just go to maxatours.com slash newsletter, put in, your, uh, uh, put in your first and last name and your email, and then I will send it to you. It's free. And if you're interested in taking a small luxury European tour, just go to maxatours.com. Um, unfortunately, we're not running any tours to uh, Montenegro right now or, uh, or uh, the neighboring country of Croatia. I would love to someday. And if we do, come along. Meanwhile, you can check out our tours for 2022 there. I think we have a couple openings left for our Christmas market tours in late November and early December this year. So maxatours.com for tours, maxatours slash newsletter. Get the newsletter. Thank you for joining me here in uh, Porto Montenegro. And uh, let's all aspire to having our own yachts.